Okay. Julian, I have extraordinarily fresh eggs today for you. Look at that. Well, oh, that's marvelous. And what do you have here? I have an ostrich egg here, and we're, we're doing an egg extravaganza today. All types of egg cooking. That's exciting. Great eggs. <laughs> and that tiny quail eggs, huh? How are you going to open this? Well, we're going to try this. Oh. Eggs. That's what we are cooking today. We're cooking together and we're cooking eggs. And we're going to start with scrambled eggs. That's a good idea. I'll do it the home cook way and you do it the fast pro way. Okay. Well, I'll start. Okay, we'll start with you then. How many eggs do you... Are we doing one portion here? Two, two, three I'll eggs? I'll do three eggs. Right. Maybe I'll, I'll break mine too. Because you have a different system than I do. Yeah, I'll break it flat. I think it's more fun to do it with one hand, but then you... That's true, but I don't like to break it here, I break it here. I'm going to put a little bit of salt in there. A bit of pepper. Here's a little pepper. So far we are in unison here. Yeah. We're doing the same eggs. Remember when I first started out at the Cordon Bleu, my old chef, Monsieur Bunard, uh -huh. said no. Who's going to make the scrambled eggs? And I, I said, je. Je. And of course, I did I. far too hard. Uh-huh. Yes, it will be done much sooner than I. I meant to keep a little bit of egg in the bowl. Oh, I know what you're going to do. What? This is the old style, to put a bit of the raw egg at the end to stop the cooking. Yeah. Right. Or, or to cream them up. Right. I, right. I like a softly scrambled egg. Yes, I do too, actually. Yes, I went to some fast food place and I said I wanted softly scrambled eggs. And they were just like hard nuggets. Uh huh. So you're going to go slowly there with the spatula? Very slowly to make kind of just a broken custard. All right. So I'm going to start mine. So because one, mine will take three or four minutes. Oh, it's true. For mine, it's not going to take as long. I'm going oh, to so steal a little piece of your butter here. I like to do it in a deeper pan like this, and with a whisk. Sometimes people do it in a bain-marie, actually, slowly, to prevent. And the idea, of course, in the French style is to cook them very, very fast, for me, with the smallest possible curd so that they don't toughen. And we're going to do a garnish with it, so. Are you going to put garlic in it? No, no, a garnish. Oh. A garnish. No garlic, no. Oh. I know, I know how he loves garlic. <laughs> I do, I do. Actually, I have a little bit of garlic in my tomato, to tell you the truth. So here we go, three eggs. So we're doing it with a whisk, with the smallest possible curl. I have some stewed tomato here. I'm going to use as a garnish, some fresh tomato. I'm going to put some crouton with it and some chives. Are you garnishing your eggs? Oh, they're going out well there. That's yes, nice. But, but very slowly. Yes, but I'm interested in seeing the difference, you know, in testing them this way and the other way. You see, here I have a lot of heat, which continue. Then, so we, we'll stop the heat a little bit by putting a dash of cream in it, or fresh butter, so that it stops the cooking. I put salt, pepper in it. And I'm ready to uh, put a little bit of my sauce here. I like to put it in the middle and actually spraying it out this way. And we put the scrambled eggs, which you will see are very soft. 
Maybe a little bit of chive on top. Do that with don't just that, done with a little really bit of like oil. That's really like a luncheon dish, isn't it? It is, it is. Yeah. Well, you know, in France, that's very lovely. often we serve egg like that as a dish, you know? Yes, you never serve eggs for breakfast. No, not very often. They were minor, minor done. They're nice and soft, and to make them a little softer, I'm going to put a little more well, you put that egg, egg yeah. in it. Mm. I think you have to remember, too, that it keeps cooking in the pan. It does. And I was going to garnish mine with a little bit of smoked salmon. Oh, that's, that's for a very good. part of a breakfast. I actually love much. smoked salmon with eggs. I do, too. It goes well together. There are things which really go well with eggs. I'm going to borrow a little bit of your chives, okay. if I may. In the middle, you want or it? Over on that, that side. Okay. Well, now, let's taste them. Yours are very glossy, soft and... Uh, That's because they're soft. Mm, Love eggs. Good. They have a different taste. That's interesting. Yes, they do. You like yours better? I, I like yours very much, I think. Mine are a little eggier. Yeah, because of the eggs at the end. We don't have to finish the whole thing, right? Mm -hmm. No. Mm, they are creamier in a sense. So try both and yeah. see what you like. They both work, that's what's yeah, good. Now we're going to show you how to make omelets, and it really needs a special technique. We're going to do first an absolutely plain omelet, which Jacques will do. Okay, so the eggs are ready here, so I'm putting, uh, well, this is a four ounce. This is about three. Three eggs, three, four eggs. So I use the bowl of that fork and we shake it with one hand. Trying to scramble it as fast as you can, bringing the skin around. The important part of the omelette is now. When I shake this and bring this to the end here, all of the eggs is there so that I don't have one layer and I'm rolling a carpet. So all of this here, you want to bring your fork around, bring back that skin here, nicely. You want a kind of half moon here. And then that lip here, you want to bang on this side to make it go on itself. Yeah, this is about three eggs, it's a bit smaller than I do usually. Then you change and you want to bang it here so that it comes totally to the edge so that you can avert it. That's beautiful. Nicely. It should be probably a bit more pointed at the end, like this. But as you can see, a very, very soft. Mm. You can serve it just like that, or you can just fill like it. Just like that. Now we're going to show a different way. Hundreds of different okay. garnish you can do. This is a no-stick pan. Yes, that's good. And I have the eggs already. I hope the pan is hot enough. And it's very important for the butter to melt and then you have to watch it for a minute until the bubbles begin to disappear and just just before the butter browns you're going to be ready to add your eggs. Now we watch, put on your glasses if you need them and make sure that the butter foam is subsiding. That's it. Is it? That's it. And this is a two egg omelet. Oh, that's a shock. And it should yeah. sizzle as it goes in. You need a fork or a spatula? Oh, you no, turn I, it. I, I, I just shake it around. I see. It's a straight jerk towards you. I like this method because it's kind of fun. It's different, yes. We do a country omelette like that in France, like my, uh, at home, usually with larger curd like this. And uh, checking the pan or moving the eggs around so that the eggs goes, the liquid eggs between the curd. Mm -hmm. And that's another way of doing it. We do it very much the same at the end. That's it. Bring the other lip. But then the, watch, watch, you can put the lip of the pan on the plate and then turn it all the way over. That's good. And it's all right to do that. You cut the center like this and put your garnish inside the omelette bread here. And this I've got a little sautéed of onion and potatoes and ham. That's we one way. To have a little That's grand-mère, you know. Grand -mère. We ought to have a little. So maybe I'll do I'll do an omelette uh, with mushroom. Yes, do that. 
So you know, two mushrooms per person is more than enough, and what you do, the bottom part of the mushroom, you cut into little dice, or in little pieces, this is to put inside the omelette, and you keep the cap to go on top. So I'm gonna put that here. I'm going to saute the mushroom first, and the cap, this. I keep just a nice slide, the center. So two mushrooms. That's it. So I have two types then of mushrooms, some which are diced and some which are in slice like this. I put them in the same skillet to saute. They won't take long. And a little dash of salt on it. Certainly the no, the no stick surface has made such a difference in omelette. Big, making. big difference. Big, it's big just difference. impossible to make one if it sticks. So as soon as this starts softening a little bit, I'm going to remove the cap. So, here, I'll borrow your, borrow your knife and put those things right on top here. And well, this is be to the put little decoration. on top of the omelette. That's a yeah. good idea. And you know, those regular white mushrooms we have at the supermarket are perfectly fine, you know. People think you only have to have special wild mushroom, but not necessary. Okay, so here I have the base so I can put my omelette here. And again, I start with the fork. Smells I did good. Before. What? That part goes back in there. And again, at the end, you know, I want to bring more of the mixture on this side. And again, rub around. See, uh, you're absolutely right. I mean, it's so beautiful with those non-stick. Otherwise, the other one. Bring the other leap here. That's very, want to bring very the nice the way that turns over there. Yes. Isn't it? I would again bang it to the edge. This way. Looks pretty good. I don't know if it's the right plate, yellow on yellow. Very well, soft. That's kind of sheet, and finally, it? you put your mushroom like that on top. And this is it. Another classic omelette. Well, what are we going to do? Well, we do like maybe a piperade. You know, in the south of France, we call omelette basquez or omelette piperade. And it's usually very close to a western omelette. Sometimes it's also done with a piece of prosciutto inside. And sometimes only onion, a bit of sliced garlic and different color. Pepper I have here, green pepper, red one, and the yellow one. Which now are, you know, you can find those in most of the market. And usually more of a country omelette, this is like a pancake, a flat omelette. And this one usually is done with olive oil. You know, a little bit of olive oil in the south of France, that's what we use. You know, preferably a virgin olive oil for that, be better. Okay, so again, you know, often those, you can put them in the oven under the broiler, mm -hmm. you know, to get a color. I like to do it until it's holding together this way. Then after I form a crust, you know, I let see it form a crust. See how useful this omelet technique is that you can make really a wonderful meal in just a few minutes. Not only that, you do breakfast, you do lunch, you do dinner with omelet. Mm -hmm. yep. I like to put maybe a tiny bit of oil all around, you know, on the edge to make it slide nicely, so maybe a teaspoon of oil. Mm. You put around until you see that will slide around. Yeah, that's lovely. And that, that make it go. Now what? And now we have to flip it. Yeah. When you flip it, it goes all over you. All right, you flip it. Ah. Flip it out of the way. Hooray, good. All right, so you see again here, I could cook it as long as I want to give it more color. Probably a bit more color than what I did here. And how, depend also how. You could sprinkle it with cheese and stick it under the broiler. You can put cheese and put it under the broiler, that's a good idea too. Boy, I have a big, beautiful plate for that here. And you slide it like a pancake here, mm. you know. Here we put a little piece of parsley again. In the middle, just a bit of garnish here. And here is the Should we eat a little flat. piece of it? Yes. I want to taste this. Yeah, the mm. piperade. Mm. Good That's smell. very nice. Now we're going to do poached eggs. I think they're 
lovely to do it. We're going to do them two ways. I'm going to use a mechanical device, and Jack is going to use his own hands and yeah. ingenuity. So I, I like to give the eggs a 10-second boil, and I first poke a hole in the large end with a little push pin yes. because there's air in the large end, and that expands, and it could crack the egg. Right. So we've got our boiling water and we've got to count to 10 seconds, which is 1,000, 2,000. 3,000. So this is a good 4, idea. 1,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, 10,000. This and will give you a little bit of a shell on the outside so that they hold their shape better. That's what we hope. That's great. Then I'm going to use the oval perforated metal egg poacher. But Gosh. you can't, it's hard to find them now because people have become so scared of eggs. So that's... You know, that's held pretty nicely, hasn't it? Yes. You want I can to... already see your eggs are going to be better than mine. Well, you know what? We forgot to put a little bit of vinegar in there. But then that's going to be in mine, too. Oh, oh well. you mean you don't put vinegar in yours? No, you don't need to put mine, but that's well, okay. I think it holds the shape, you know, a little better. Yeah. So... Well, it does help. You break... What well, do I break it on something flat, mm -hmm. then... Open it very close to the water. You know, you want to open it close to the water so you don't burn yourself. Now, what I'd like to do with my egg there is to drag it. You know, drag the top like this. We have several eggs cooking. And if I drag the eggs with the slotted spoon here, it moves it from the bottom. And as soon as it moves from the bottom, then it stays in suspension and cooked. Otherwise, it may stick a little bit. There is another factor that we have here. You have to have enough water, and we have about well, I would say four inch of water, something like this. So this push, what, four and a half, five minutes. Now, it depends on the, how you like your eggs. No, I'm not think, I actually think four. Four minutes. Well, I'm going to say this is done. This is done, so you slide it in cold water. We put them in ice water. It stops the cooking and it washes up the vinegar also. So now I will oh, cool that up looks lovely, my, mine, you see, touching well, just that looks the very well. a little bit. We put them here. Well, that, that came One. out beautifully and it looks very eggy. Two. Three. Now, what happened there, when your eggs cool off, you can pick one up. I mean, not yours because they were done in a thing, but the one that I did by itself, and you will see that there is something hanging around. So I, we trim this a little bit. Mm -hmm. That looks lovely. And the point is that this is the bottom of the egg, this is the top. As you see, it's slightly different. There is always one side which looks better than the other. You see, it's quite soft. Yeah, well, that's lovely. Now, as we haven't talked enough about this salmonella business, I think when you buy eggs, be sure that you buy them from a place that sells a whole lot of eggs and keeps them always refrigerated. Uh -huh. And then you yourself, wish these are still chilled, but you don't take your eggs in a bowl like this and keep them out. They should be in the refrigerator all the time until you're yes. going to cook them. I think that's important. Yes. That's very, very important. Take them seriously. Okay. okay, now what? We do Hollandaise now? Hollandaise, good. The classic Hollandaise. All right, I have a couple of egg yolk here, and I'm going to put a little bit of water in there and a little bit of... Uh, Lemon a juice. A tablespoon huh? each of lemon juice? Yes, well, about a tablespoon all together. And what you want to do, you want your egg yolk to be cooked enough. Often people are so afraid of cooking those egg yolk that actually they are not cooked enough, you know. But of course, you want to be careful not to do scrambled eggs. So, you know, sometimes you move them out, you move them back in when you feel that it's going a bit too fast. You have to cook it enough so it'll thicken. As you can see, now it's starting cooking. I, I yes, start seeing in between the strike of the whisk, yes, so start seeing the that. bottom, you know? Mm -hmm. It's definitely, it's a thick too, isn't it? Yep, so I'm removing it there. I think that this is cooked enough. Looks that way. That part of the Hollandaise we call the sabayon. And sometimes we use that to add to a fish sauce and all that. So here, should be really kind of off the heat. To start oh, putting oh, your oh, no. butter. And that's so terribly important, just little droplets at first. Because if you put in too much, it and if, thin if you start getting too thick, as mine is getting thick here, put a little bit of warm water. And that's really taken, hasn't it? Yeah. You want to put a little bit of salt in there? Mm -hmm. Give me a dash of salt. 
And I like a little dash of cayenne. Oh, you can. That gives it a prettier color. Yeah. Whoop, that's good. Beautiful. Okay, so we can finish our egg now. We'll start with the eggs Benedict. Okay. So and I think it's usually done on an English muffin, but I think the English muffin is a little bit tough to cut. I'd much rather have a nice brioche bread and cut a circle out of it. All right. Put I'm putting on. the eggs to rewarm there. You know, another thing that we have, which is very classic here, to show you, I have some truffle here. Oh, and, uh, nothing wrong with them. Look at that. Stop Beautiful black that. tuberum, melanosperum, the black truffle of Perigord. So we put a couple of slices, you see that truffle slicer. This is extravagant. Yeah. you don't well, have it. Well, why not? Why don't you have it? Yes, I don't know. And we just warm up the truffle with a little bit of butter for a, a minute or so. That's mm -hmm. about fine. And they get darker like this and they get mm -hmm. a bit soft. That's which lovely. They should be. So I leave them here. Oh, wait, no. What do we do? Now we're practically ready. Okay. There, here's your piece of toast. And then we. Put a little ham on it. This is a, a kind of a prosciutto ham, which I think is nice. Put in one of your eggs right there. Whether it's yours or mine, but beautiful. So a bit of the Hollande sauce. And of course, this is very delicious. We put our uh, pieces of uh, truffle on top. Which you don't have to do, but it's nice no, if someone's given you something. As as there. That's lovely. Beautiful, yes. Of course, this is the classic egg benedict, right? See here, if you break it, you can see the inside of the yolk. It's just mm. about the that right way, right? That looks just lovely, doesn't it? Yes, it does. You're gonna, you don't have any mm. of the toast with it. I think one forgets I haven't eaten how it. good hollandaise yes. is. I was just going to say that. I haven't eaten that hollandaise in quite a while. You don't do that all the time, but when you do it and do oh, it properly, it's good. Now, for the ostrich, you were killing with the electric saw, right? I was. All right, so we're going to cut it. I'll hold it for you. Well, put on your goggles. I'm yeah, I think it's a Who good knows idea. what's going to happen? Not knows what's going to happen. Okay. That's it. That's it. it oh, oh look, look at, at that. that egg. It's incredible. At, the yolk. Look it, at the side of that that's yolk. That's incredible. My God. Now we're going to scramble it, are we? I can take this out now. Uh -huh. This That's is beautiful. beautiful. I mean, look at the size of that quail egg, you know, next to it. <laughs> so what we're going to do is, you can make at least four or five omelettes of what we did this morning. Or one of those big potato well, omelettes. Well, it's a great you know? big omelette like this. Yeah, I would say that this is probably, at that point, a dozen and a half of eggs that amount to this, you know. Okay, here I think I'm going to put it in there. And we're going to do a big omelette or scramble eggs with this, right? It's going to take quite a while to make, Jack. So let's relax and let's enjoy it. Have a little glass of wine. Yes. And a bon appétit. And a big cooking. We'll probably be here next time still cooking this egg.